Hello, everyone. How are you? How was the weekend? Hello, Ivan. Hello, hello, teacher. Good evening. Okay. Sorry. Good evening, teacher. Is everything okay? Yes. Okay. That's good. Very good, very good. Re ready to start. Like the day. <laughs> okay. Ready to start another week. Another week. Yeah, sounds... Learning a lot, a lot by step by step. Yes. You. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. You know, little by little. We are learning more and more. Yeah. How is the traffic in the in the area where you live? Uh, because my job is near my house. Like ah, okay. uh, it's near. Like a five minutes. Hey, that's nice. <laughs> yes. That's very like that's very, very nice. So you don't have to to be in traffic for a long time. Yes, I. I quedé. I quedé harto de tráfico. Yeah. Okay. That's good. In which in which area do you live? San Martín. Ah. Okay. Yes. Well, but that uh, from San Martin to San Salvador is heavy, right? A lot of traffic. Yes, yes. very uh, heavy. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh, yeah. Correct. So I think that's one of the most uh, difficult areas to to come across during the day. Yes. Oh, but it's nice, you know, that you that you live uh, near your work because you. You don't have to stress yourself too much, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like my job. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially working in a, a near your house. How long does it take you to get from uh, from work to your house? Or oh, from your house to your work? Ten like, minutes. Uh, Ten minutes. Five. Not three minutes. Three minutes. Next yeah. door. Next door. My blog, oh, <laughs> like a one blog. Wow, <laughs> oh, that's that's nice. That's very nice. I love my job. It's <laughs> a dream. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Imagine no, no, no. I wake up like this. What time do you start working? What time what? do you start working? Uh, like a three year and my church in my church with a center of desarrollo integral. No, but what time do you start in, your classes? And uh, with you? Uh, with no, you, I mean the, the, the work. You start at ah, seven, seven thirty. Seven. Ah, okay. Seven until four o'clock. Four o'clock. So you cannot tell in your house, no, there was too much traffic. And when you get home at 5, 5 p.m., <laughs> where were you? Ah, in traffic. <laughs> there, are, there, are, there are no excuses. No, no excuses. Uh, no excuses. You have to be home five minutes after four. 100% uh, control. Okay, good. Hello, okay. Jenny. How are you, Jenny? Hello, Jenny. Can you hear me? But I can't hear you. No, no sound.
Okay. Okay, good. Then, no, Jenny, you couldn't fix it? No mic. Your microphone is not working. Jenny, your microphone. Su micrófono no funciona. No le escucho. Ah, okay, now it's connecting audio. Maybe now. Okay. Okay, so we're going to get it started. I guess let me help one of your classmates that needs some help. Okay, so let's go to uh, section two. Give me a reason. Okay. Since because of and some others, stay and you will learn not only the meaning but how to use them. Use them. Giving reasons. Hello. If you want to give reasons, you may do so by using because, since, because of, and some others. Stay and you will learn not only the meaning, but how to use them. Giving reasons. I like the Casablanca because it's always packed. Since it's always so packed, there's a long wait outside the club. It's popular because of the fashionable people. The Soul Club is famous for its fabulous music. Due to the crowds, the Casablanca is difficult to get into. The reason people go there is just to be seen. The reason that people go there is just to be seen. The reason why people go there is just to be seen. To give reasons, we may use because, since, because of, for, due to, the reason that, the reason why, is. Let's begin with because and since. They mean the same, although since is more formal. Because and since are followed by a subject and a verb. Subject plus verb. I love the soul club because the music is great. Because or since can begin or end a sentence. When the clause is at the beginning, it is followed by a comma. Since it's packed, comma, there's a long wait. Or there is a long wait since it's packed. The clause with because or since is a subordinated one. 
not a main clause. Because of and due to. They mean the same, although due to often has a negative connotation. Because of and due to are followed by a noun or a noun phrase. This is my favorite club because of the great music. Because of or due to can begin a sentence. When the clause is at the beginning, it is followed by a comma. Due to the crowd, comma, it's difficult to get into. Or it's difficult to get into due to the crowds. The clause with because of or due to is a subordinated clause, not a main clause. Four. Four plus noun or noun phrase. It's famous, well known, popular for its music. The reason that, the reason why is. The reason Julie goes there is to have fun. Or the reason why Julie goes there is to have fun. Can you answer the following questions given reasons? Why do you think English is so popular? Why do you think there's so much traffic in your city? Write your reasons on our discussion box. Of approximately 153 colossal standing stones. Weighing up to 40 tons and arranged in a circular. Use them. Giving reasons. I like the Casablanca. Okay. <clears throat> you know, that here, like the, for example, the main the main words that we use to give reasons, right? Because, since, because of, for, due to, the reason that, or the reason why. Okay. So then basically this chart here summarizes, you know, the use of how we can give reasons for different situations, right? Uh, when you're talking probably uh, about a movie, okay, or a, a song, a group, a band, probably, you know, you can, you're gonna use this structure, right? I like the Casablanca because it's always packed. This is probably a place, also, like a club, like they say, a, it could also be a soccer team, a car. I like the, um, I don't know, the Kia cars because they are uh, reliable. Okay. Um, if you're talking about food, you can say that I like tea because it, it makes me feel relaxed. Okay, I love coffee because um, it keeps me awake when I am tired. So you can, you know, paraphrase, you can use different situations and giving a reason why you like that. Uh, since coffee keeps me awake, okay, since coffee keeps me awake is my favorite drink when I am sleepy. Okay, uh, since uh, chocolate, it's my favorite uh, sweet, I eat it every day, okay? Then you're gonna use this one, just when you write or when you speak, make sure that we are using the commas, right? When we use the, let's say the, the connector, since, because, because of, at the beginning here, in this case, when I use the comma to separate the two sentences, okay? Teacher. Yes. Uh, I have a question about the, the clause, the uh, two. Uh, I heard it's that uh, is, is uh, Since it's always, oh, sorry, so sorry, sorry, sorry. there's a long wait outside the- Wait, yeah. sorry. Uh -huh. Can you repeat it because you just started the, the video, uh-huh. Okay. Uh, this is about the class uh, two, two. I heard that uh, it's for giving a uh, negative reason only. Is that absolutely true? No, because if it's the, 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 it doesn't say for negative uh, reasons, it's the connotation. It's, for example, that if you say due to the crowds, 
the Casablanca is difficult to get into. So uh, that would be like the connotation, the, the real meaning is like, um, if I don't like, if I don't like to be in crowded places or if I don't like uh, to have a uh, long waits, then I could say, okay, due to the crowds or due to the, the Casablanca is always packed, I never go there, okay? So that is the connotation, but you will not see it in the in a negative structure. Okay, like if you see here, in this example in the video, it says due to the crowds, okay, because of that, the reason the Casablanca is difficult to get into, which means that if it weren't, if it weren't crowd, then the Casablanca wouldn't be so difficult to get into. In other words, using other structures, conditionals, for example, probably you will need to use a negative structure, okay? So that's why probably you would say that due to this, uh, the connotation, right? Not, not in the structure. I don't right. know if, if that is your question. Okay. Can, can we say that in some, in some way it alert you uh, of something, uh, that something bad within the, the future? Uh, yeah, probably not, not something bad. It's just like, for example, when we want to maybe, uh, how can I tell this? Something that probably does not go according to, well, it could be bad, but according to my perspective, okay? There are some people that they, they don't care about waiting long lines. Okay, so then probably they're just saying, for example, due to the crowds, the Casablanca is difficult to get into, but I don't mind. I don't mind waiting. Okay, but in my case, in my case, I would say, for example, that I wouldn't go to that place, my personal opinion, right? So you see, it depends on the, on the perspective of the person, okay? And if the person has that, Connotation, it will express it that way. For example, if you say due to the due to the rain, uh, we will have to stop the class today. Okay, or uh, due to the lack of energy. Okay, or probably uh, due to the blackout. Imagine there is a blackout. If there is no electricity. Due to the blackout, we will have to stop uh, the classes today. Okay. Or due to the blackout, we had to stop classes last week. Okay, so then this is, for example, that was the main reason. Okay, but it's not a that we don't not gonna use it sometimes in the same structure. Okay. Okay. Clear. Thank you. Good. And then we have the. Okay. Uh, it is popular because of. And four, right? For example, this is, I remember like I was telling you the other day, the purpose, right? The soft club is famous for its favorite music, okay? English is popular for the opportunities it opens to people who can speak it, right? English is popular not because it's English or because uh, it's, because it's from the United States or because of English is popular because it opens opportunities to people who can speak it. Okay, that's the purpose, right? The main reason. And then you have due to crowds, okay? Due to, it could be due to the noise, okay? Due to the noise, okay? Or the interference I get in my uh, earphones, I can't hear what you are saying. Okay, so that is the there is a something wrong with my earphone, and then I cannot hear very well. And the reason that people go, okay, the reason people go to church is because we all need to uh, have a connection, okay, uh, with a higher, let's say, with a higher um, vibe or energy. Okay, or a high or or God, if you want to mention it that way. Okay, the reason why 
people go to go to work or the reason why people work is because we need to pay debts okay we need to pay bills we need to to eat okay so then this is for example the different ways that you can use the the given reasons right I guess you all have already Okay, so this is the exercise that you have. It says read the paragraphs, complete it by filling the blank spaces using because, since, because of, or due to the reason why. Okay, so we have the MTV is one of the most popular television networks in the world. People love MTV not only. Not only what? Because. Not only because. Because of. Uh, not only because yeah. of its music videos, but also. Due to. Or. Or also. For it's clever. For it's clever. Okay. Everybody agrees? Yes. No teacher. But that was, that was before teacher. Today, do two is teacher. Do two. But also, do two? Yeah. Do two. Do two, it's clever and diverse programming. Okay. I agree. I agree. This is a contrast, right? When we're using but. Now, in this one, it keeps its, it keeps, it shows up to the minute. Young people watch MTV for the latest facts. He sings. Sings. Sings it keep. Okay. Since it keeps its shows. Okay. How about this one? Who wants to read this? MTV. Hey, teacher. Yes, go ahead, Julio. MTV is also well known uh, for its music awards show. Okay, good. And the last one? Me, teacher. Yeah, Carla. The reason why so many people watch it is to see all the fashionable guests. The reason why. Okay. There you go. Okay, so say MT MTV is one of the most popular television networks. Okay, not only but also the two since for the purpose and the reason why. Okay, cool. I don't know which strategy are you using for the listening? It also depends on how skillful you are when you listen, but uh, one strategy that works well with the listening exercises is, you know, the first time you listen, okay, without looking at the questions or material, then uh, after the first time you listen, you can go and check the sentences, 
then you listen a second time and then you begin to answer, okay, the questions. And then a third time, then you can uh, check, double check that the answers that you have marked are according to what you have listened, okay? So then usually, also depending also on the on how long the the listening is, because if it is five minutes, probably you no know, to listen three times is going to be too much time. You get bored. Probably you no know, with uh one two times would be okay. But when they are short, you know you can do it this uh, practice three times, and that will help you to polish, you know, to to improve your listening. Okay. Page 82, exercise 10, listening, radio commercials. Listen to three radio commercials advertising businesses. What are two special features of each place? What slogan does each place use? One, Maggie's. Oh, Carol! What a great suit! It looks just like the one I saw in the latest fashion magazine. Is that a... Uh-huh. Wow! But her clothes are so expensive. How can you afford designer clothes? And on our salary? Hey, did you get a raise? No way! You know I'd tell you if I did. Well, there's something you're not telling me. Okay, okay. Well, I found this really great store. They have all the latest fashions, not last year's stuff that's already out of style. And their prices are just unbelievable. They must be. That's the second new outfit you've worn this week. Where is this place? It's called Maggie's, and it's just around the corner. I'll take you there at lunchtime. Don't wait for your lunch hour. Come to Maggie's now. We've got all the best designer fashions at the lowest prices, and we accept all major credit cards. Remember, if you don't see what you want in your closet, come check out ours. Two, Sports Pro. Hey, people, what are you going to do this summer? A little fishing? Camping? Maybe finally learn how to play tennis instead of just watching it on TV? Yeah, I know how much you'd like to do these things. If only you had the right equipment. If only you knew what you were looking for when you walked into one of those big sporting goods stores. Well, here at Sports Pro, we want to help you, not confuse you. Our experienced salespeople are knowledgeable. They really know what they're talking about. So. Feeling inspired? Good. Now, come on in. No excuses, because we're open every day. Sports Pro, we're here to help you have fun. Three, Mexi Grill. Excuse me, was that your stomach I just heard growling? Hmm, feeling hungry, right? Only, you're not sure what you want? Well, close your eyes and picture this. A huge tortilla filled with sizzling pieces of chicken. Should you add fried onion and peppers? Or maybe crispy lettuce and tomato? Or guacamole and spicy salsa? Well, you know what? You can have any of these because we'll add any combination of fillings you want. In a hurry? No problem. We have lots of people waiting to serve you. And check out our low prices. Mexi Grill. You won't find a cheaper, tastier meal anywhere. All right. What about Maggie's Fishers? Fast service, low prices, lowest prices, accept credit cards, knowledgeable salespeople open every day. 
lowest prices. Second one, teacher. Lowest prices. prices. Okay. Price Good. Okay, who wants to read number two? I'm volunteer for number two. Maybe, teacher. Okay, Marlene, go ahead. And no knowledgeable salespeople open every day. Open every day. Okay, good. How about number three? Me, teacher. teacher. Yes, Francisco. Fast service and low prices. Uh, fast service? Mexico. Yeah. The first one, right? The first one. The first one. Yeah. yeah. Fast right. service and low prices. Good. Okay, people, there we go. See, these are ads, right? These are commercials, then radio ads, the advertising business, right? If you want to talk about clothes, sports pro, and food, three different areas, okay, or fields. The wrong stuff. Hey, this is too much. Okay. Jorge, Alberto, what is the wrong stuff? In your own words, what? Um, excuse me, teacher. What is the meaning of wrong stuff? Wrong stuff. Mm, I don't, teacher. You don't know. Okay, no problem. No problem. Who knows the when you say, for example, the wrong stuff? What is it referring to? Maybe something that is wrong that we thought before. Okay, yes. Okay, that's a good idea. For example, if you read here, if a business wants to sell its products internationally, it had better do some market research first. This is a lesson that some large American corporations have learned the wrong, the wrong way. Yes, right, because sometimes we, we do the things in the incorrect way, right, in the wrong way. But sometimes it's not because we have a bad intention or sometimes uh, it's just lack of knowledge, lack of experience, right? Now, when we have experience, then we learn a little bit more. Okay, uh, let me see. Uh, Romeo, can you please read this? the first three lines here? If a business. The first three lines. This one here. Uh, your microphone. Your microphone is off. I'm sorry. Okay. If a business wants to sell its product internationally, it had better do some market research first. This is a lesson that some large American corporations have learned to the hard way. Have learned the hard way, okay. So you see, for example, if you want to sell, if you want to go internationally, then you have to do a lot of work. Okay, um, Carla Rene, read what's in a name. Carla Rene. Read the second paragraph. What's in a name? Sometimes the problem is the name. When General Motors introduced Chevy Nova into Latin America, it overlooked the fact Nova in Spanish means it doesn't go. 
-hmm. Sure enough, Chevy Nova never went anywhere in Latin America. Okay, good. To say Nova, Nova. Okay, so then they they didn't know that uh, we have a lot. Uh, we have arbores, right, in different ways. So we use uh, sometimes we get another meaning of the words. Okay, so it means it doesn't go. So that was they didn't research the market, right? That it had a a negative meaning for them in that case uh, with that name. Okay, Giovanni, go for the next one, please. Translation problems. Wonderful. Could you a little bit scroll down, yes. please? Yes, yes. Just let me see because it doesn't work now. No worries. So here we go. How wonderful. Thank you so much. Translation problems. Sometimes it's the slogan that doesn't work. No company knows this better than Pepsi Cola. With its coma live with Pepsi. Compined. The combined was so successful in the United States. Pepsi translated its slogan literally for its international campaign. As it turned out, the translation weren't quite right. Pepsi was pleading with Germans to come out of the grave and telling the Chinese that Pepsi brings your ancestors back from the grave. <laughs> okay you see for example when you but you know for us when you say come alive with pepsi you know we understand that we are alive so if we drink a pepsi you know it's going to bring more energy okay that's what we understand but for german people was uh you know to have like a zombie right coming out of the grave okay and for chinese it was the pepsi brings your ancestors back from the grave. So, you know, depending on the, that's what I was telling you, right? The connotation, the perspective that people have. Okay, so then uh, that's why, you know, these companies have to be very careful with the kind of uh, a commercials they make. Okay, good. Uh, Xiomara, read the next one, just let me... Okay. Uh, a picture worth a thousand words. Other times the problem involves packing packaging. a picture packaging a picture of a smiling round checked baby has helped. Sells count sell countless hearts jars of Herbert Baby. Herbert Baby food. And so when Herbert may market it, its products in Africa, it kept the picture on the jar. What Herbert didn't realize was that in many African countries, the picture of the jar shows what the jar has in it. Okay, what about this one? So imagine in Africa, it says other times the problem involves packaging. A picture of a smile, round cheeked baby, right, has helped sell countless of jar herber baby, the baby food. But when they marketed its products in Africa, it kept the picture of the jar. And the jar, what Gerber didn't realize was that in many African countries, the picture on the jar shows what the jar has in it. It means that how can you sell that, you know, when African people, you know, the colors, the skin color is completely different. Okay, in some cases, the nutrition is not exactly, you know, like the one that they would see in the image, right? So I guess that, or in Africa, obviously you can find uh, a, how do you call this, uh, like colonies from France, from England, right? Where the people are, uh, have a different social status, right? So then, but not for the general people of Africa. Okay, and Sarah Elisa, read the last one, twist of fate. Even cultural and religious factors and pure coincidence can be involved. Tom McCann's shows shoes have a Tom McCann signature inside. 
two people in Bangladesh. Bangladesh. This, Bangladesh. This signature looked like Arabic script for the word Allah. Allah. In that in that country, feet are considered unclean, and most. most how do you pronounce Ma this word? Muslims. Muslims felt the company was insulting God names, God's name by having people walk on it. Imagine. So that's you know just the research, right? So we have, I mean nowadays it's very very careful. Do you know any? Any anecdote or something like that in a business here in El Salvador with the with the publicity in marketing? A situation similar to this that we have a problem with the propaganda they make for a specific product. No? Okay, for example, but you know, but there are some other things that I in this moment I don't remember the the name of this uh in in the language. But for example, sometimes uh, when you want to when men or well also women want to buy uh a shade of this, a blade to shave up, what do you call that in Spanish? When you go to the store and you want to buy it's a, a blade like this. I guess gillet. Uh-huh. Okay. We call it okay, and the gillet, right? But is that the name? No. That's the make. That's the brand. Okay. So sometimes we say, for example, do you have a tienum clinics? Right? And then we're talking about the toyita, right? Then you say the, the, the tissue. Uh, we say clinics, but we use the brand. So we have gotten used to the, the name of the brand and not to the name of the object, right? The same with the, the brand Pampers. We uh -huh. ask always in the, the store, one Pamper. <laughs> uh-huh, exactly. We say the Pamper, and then Pamper is also a brand. Exactly right, and then you have to use that one also for the diapers also that we use, right? So then, uh, but it happens, right, that some cases they use this. But now they have made more common in English also the action pumper, okay? So now this is included in the language, okay? And like that, there are many things that have to do because like they said at the beginning, uh, the companies, when they go in the international market, they have to okay to do some investigation some research okay it is important and sometimes they don't do this now questions about vocabulary before we go to the questions vocabulary expressions ideas a context yes. what what does it mean <laughs> what does it mean when it says uh, it turned out it's it, it turned out that was in the in the Pepsi cola uh -huh. Mexico, uh, uh, oh no no let's see there there is a part that uh and it says that uh come alive or ah, was come that alive the... come alive uh, with Pepsi. Ah uh, that, that was a part that says it turned out as as a ah okay it uh ah, okay here I know as it turned out, it is something like you know the it resulted that it oh, resulted okay. that okay. So that is for for example, as it turned out, the translation weren't okay quite right. So then the translation they wanted right. So then okay. it wasn't quite right. So then there it resulted in a mistake, but they don't use it resulted in right. So they use as it turned out. Okay. Just, right. for, just to confirm, yeah, that's the meaning of result of, right? Uh huh. Exactly. Yes, the result. Wonderful. The result. The meantime, like they come, it came up, like they come out, come out of something. Mm -hmm. And what is the meaning of overlooked? Overlooked is like when you 
do not do uh um, look down do look not, down it, it just like you look down something like you know careless you say ah yeah it's all right good go ahead you don't pay atten enough attention to that then you overlooked okay and then uh, then you should pay more attention to that right to those details okay so that is overlooked like when you looked all, also somebody over your shoulder, right? Like you say, hey, who's that guy? Okay, who's that? Some, something like you think that you are higher than that. What else? Okay, another question about the, the last uh, paragraph, the twist, twist of faith. When it says that, uh, let's see, feet are considered clean and Muslims felt the, the company was insulting God. I mean, uh, I understand that uh, from my from my understanding, uh, it says that it's talking about the Muslims, but it's talking about at the same time about the uh, Bangladesh. I mean, are are there uh, Bangladesh? Mm -hmm. uh, are there Muslims in Bangladesh? I mean, it, it's confusing. Yes, huh? according to the to the paragraph. Yes, right. According to the paragraph. There are some people probably from that uh, religion in Bangladesh. And oh. then that's what it says. This you know, look like Arabic script for the word Allah. In that country, okay, feet are considered, in Bangladesh, feet are considered unclean. And Muslims fell, okay. uh, and the people who belong oh. to that. Okay, here we have some people uh, oh. that follow also Muslim, right? But obviously hmm. very few. And they say felt the company was insulting that name. Yes. This is the context of the of the place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. You know, uh, North American people sometimes they are uh, very hard on some. Uh, remember that they have different creeds. Okay, different beliefs. Some of them strongly believe in God. Some others have a, maybe a, an idea of, of just, uh, they don't believe in like Catholics, in virgins, saints and everything, right? So they there are different beliefs. So so that's why sometimes when they do this kind of uh, commercials, sometimes you find some jokes that they do in some movies, kind of offensive, okay? But it depends on who is watching the movie. For some other people say, ah, it's okay, it's just a movie. But no, everybody takes it that way. Okay, let's do this. This one. Okay, who wants to read number one? General Motors. Did extensive research before introducing the Chevy Nova. False teacher. False. False teacher. Okay. They come up, they come alive with Pepsi campaign work well in the United States. True. True. true? true. It's true. It's true. And Pepsi still sold well in Germany and China? Not given. Oh, Not given. yeah. No, Pepsi still sold well. It doesn't say right, so it's, the information is not given. Gerber changed his packaging after the problem in Africa. Not given. Not given. Not given. Not given. Not given. Uh -huh. <laughs> probably yes, probably not. Uh, Tom Macken used the Arabic script for the word Allah in their shoes. False. 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 It was his signature, right? was his signature. And the problem for Tom Macken was the company's name. False. This is also false. Okay. This is going to be another 10 for you. Okay. That's it. Okay, 
Okay, just let me show you one part of this. Transporting those for people who didn't have the wheel has to have been an unbelievably difficult. Remember, you may play them as many times as you need to. The idea is for you to feel comfortable with them. Stonehenge is a mysterious ancient monument. Okay, have you ever heard about Stonehenge? Within this, this Scotland country uh-huh yes it's that. Mm -hmm. why have you yeah, heard just... about, about why have you heard about it uh, in, gen in general right not no details just just to, to lead it which uh like it's a it's a monument in the country mm -hmm. and i understand that uh behind behind it uh, there's a lake with the uh, monster called uh, I don't remember <laughs> the Loch Ness. Ah, uh -huh. yes, Ness. Loch Ness. Right. Ah, uh, the Loch Ness. Yes, monster. Right. That's also a well. It is supposed to be a legend, but so for some people, it is not. I mean, there are you know in that area of Great Britain, uh, where you have a uh, Ireland, uh, Belfast, you know, the Southern Ireland, Scotland, Wales. So there are a lot of uh, mystic things, right? And then there are a lot of uh stories around this these places okay so let's listen to this now you know that it's about stonehenge which which is a mystery pay attention to the structures they use while they are telling this story and then after we're going isolated to, deep in the english countryside to discuss it okay to this day no one has been able to determine who built Stonehenge, or why? <clears throat> the original monument was made up of approximately 153 colossal standing stones, weighing up to 40 tons and arranged in a circular enclosure. The people who built Stonehenge must have been doing so for purposes that seemed very, very important to them at the time. It was always a literally monumental undertaking. A lot of the big stones come from Wales, so transporting those for people who didn't have the wheel has to have been an unbelievably difficult uh, undertaking. Stonehenge has been called everything from a Neolithic hospital to an alien landing site, a solar temple, to a druid shrine. The period we're dealing with here is our, our prehistory, and what defines prehistory is that we've got no written records about anything. So everything that we understand about it comes from, from archaeology, from what we can excavate, from what we can analyze. In 2008, hundreds of human bones were excavated at the site, primitively burned and buried. The bones were dated across a thousand years of prehistory. The first analysis of all the cremated bones that were found at Stonehenge suggests that it's mainly adult males, adult men, that were buried there. So it's quite a distinctive group of people, and only probably very important people came there to be buried. The cremated remains suggest that the history books may need to be rewritten. Stonehenge could have been a temple of the dead a place where ancient people came to commune with the spirits. And the 2009 discovery of a second circle called Blue Stonehenge appears to be further evidence that Stonehenge formed part of a huge ceremonial complex. <clears throat> Stonehenge clearly is a place of ceremony. It's a place where people gather together. I don't think they built it and then just abandoned it. And I'm sure that elaborate ceremonies went on there. It is these rituals and ceremonies that are key to understanding of people lost to history.
Okay. Keep on watching these videos. They give you a preview of what this section will be about. Okay, what were some uh, structures that you saw in this uh, in this video? Apart from the story, right? But how what were how, what structures were they using to tell the story? How are you doing with the think, intro think videos? Remember, you may play them as many times as you need to. The idea is for you to feel comfortable with them. Stonehenge is a mysterious ancient monument, isolated deep in the English countryside. To this day, no one has been able to determine who built Stonehenge or why. The original monument was made up of approximately 153 colossal standing stones, weighing up to 40 tons and arranged in a circular enclosure. The people who built Stonehenge must have been doing so for purposes that seemed very... Okay, this is the one, right? The people who built Stonehenge must have been The people who built Stonehenge must have been doing so for purposes that seemed very... Must have been doing so for a purpose, right? So that expression, like, for example, must have been doing so, that is basically the... the what this, uh, this section is going to be about, right? For example, in this case, you will see... Uh, a conversation about offering explanations, okay? So that's what they are doing. When we have a mystery to solve, and if I'm going to give you my perception, my idea, my opinion about the the, the possible solution or let's say, a, let's say some uh, meaning of that mystery, I'm going to use some phrases to try to explain, okay, about that mystery. That's for explanations, pay attention to the past models. Now listen to this conversation and we are going to check the conversation where you will see these structures. Hi, we're ready to play the next conversation, but we want you to be ready to answer these questions. You asked Beth to be here around seven o'clock, didn't you? Yes. What time is it now? It's almost eight. I wonder what happened. Hmm. She might have forgotten the time. Okay, there you have the first one, right? Is, uh, yes, when you say, for example, it's, you say, what time is it now? It's almost eight o'clock. Okay, I wonder what happened. Hmm, she might have forgotten the time. You are jumping to a conclusion you are trying to explain a possibility of a situation that might have happened and explain the reason why beth is not there yet yes you got the idea okay so this is for example when we're talking about this uh, this kind of model okay she might have forgotten we can use may, might, must, should, okay, to explain this. <clears throat> Why don't I call and see if she's on her way? And then let's continue listening. Why don't I call and see if she's on her way? I got her voicemail, so she must not have turned on her cell phone. And this is a logical conclusion, right? I got her voicemail. So she must not have turned on her cell phone. 
Okay. Oh, she must not have a, a charged her cell phone. Okay. And now she's she ran out of battery. Could be another another reason. I hope she didn't have a problem on the road. Her car could have broken down or something. Could have broken of course, down. she may have simply forgotten and done something else today. She may no, have simply. She couldn't have forgotten. I just talked to her about it yesterday. I guess we should start without her. What time was Beth asked to come? What time is it now? What, what time was Beth asked to come? What time is it now? Forgotten and done something else today. Okay, what are the expressions that try to explain uh, Beth's uh, absence? The first one, she might have forgotten the time. Another one? Okay, I'm, I'm she mean, must uh, have told. Okay, she must not have She must not have so. oh. Okay, that's the second. Another one? We have could have broken down. Okay, her car could have broken down. It's also a possibility. That's three. What else? May have simply forgotten. Yeah, she may have simply forgotten. She may have simply forgotten. And? Couldn't have forgotten. I had to say, no, no, she couldn't have forgotten. Okay, that's the fifth one. Okay, so these are, for example, the situations that try to pay, uh, explain something. It's like an speculation. Okay, when we spec there, they are actually speculating, right, of something that must have happened. Okay, with Beth. Now, what is the structure that they use? We have might is the model verb. Then we use have auxiliary have auxiliary have like the present perfect okay yeah and then after we are going to use verb in past participle that's correct okay the verb in past participle so then what we have here and remember that in this case if you see might have forgotten she might have forgotten and she must not have turned and her car could have broken and she may have, okay, we're using have, 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 because remember that after the model verbs, may, might, in this case, may, might, uh, must, and what is the one? could, we use the next verb in base form. And since we are going to use the, uh, the auxiliary have, we don't need to change she, for example, in this one, she might has forgotten because we are using using she. Okay, she might have forgotten. Okay. Now, for example, uh, imagine that I'm just going to invent a name, right? Uh, Tom is not here in class today. What could be an speculation that we could make about Tom? Because he's not today here in class. I don't see Tom. What could have happened to him? Whatever comes to your mind, using may, might, mass, could, and... He could, uh -huh. he could have felt sick. Okay, he, he could have, uh, yes, he could have felt sick, okay. He might have felt sick, okay. What else? He could have worked until late today. Okay, he could have worked late today, or until late today. Yes. What else? Think, think. Any possibility? He could have, have forgotten respect. to come to the yeah, class. Yeah, he, he may have, may, may or must have, what did you say? May or might? Giovanni? In, in oh, this case, might. We... oh, might, yes. He might have forgotten, possibly, okay? You know, sometimes I'm afraid of, forget, of forgetting to log in on time. So it could happen. Yes, Oscar? In, in this case, yeah, can we use it with the should? He should have. 
what? Uh, for example, uh, he should have uh, did uh, or he should have uh, done something else. Should have. Huh? Should have. Can, can well, use it with, with should? should have is a. Uh... Yeah, I mean, it's the same structure. It's a, uh, should have is more than explanation. Is a, a, you use it for regrets. Oh. Okay, okay. for example, a, suppose that a, a Tom did not log in because he lost the, he lost the, the what? The link. And then you tell him, hey, Hey, uh, Tom, why didn't you log in last night? Ah, because I I lost the link. Ah, you should have called me. You should have sent me a WhatsApp. I should have, and then you say, I should have, uh, like I said, uh, uh, I would have given it to you. Okay, you should have told me. And then you're something like, you know, why didn't you tell me? Okay, so that sounds more like a regret. Okay, but it's correct, right? In that, in that uh, structure. Peter, I have a question. I guess mm -hmm. it's not regarding to the structure, but is it correct to say that I have the hunch that something, for example, happened with him, for example, he got um, sick? Well, yes, if it is a hunch, you know, yeah, I could have, I mean, actually it is. When you, when we have this one, it could be a logical I guess, right? Or yes, I guess, but it's also a feeling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like the hunch, mm -hmm. you know, it can be a feeling that you are, having just in case something happened. Yes, mm, okay. actually, sometimes, well, it, it usually have. there are stories that tell, you know, that mothers sometimes feel that, you know, they have the hunch that something happened to their children, right? And then, uh, so it's, it's a possibility. Yeah, no problem. So actually you can use that one too. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, people, any other one, questions? No? Okay, so then, um, perfect. And let's let you go. It's not working with the link. Sometimes the link work only when they want. Okay, I just, Okay, then uh, for tomorrow, we're going to have practice of this. And I think you have been What's your, your, have you, uh, have, oh, by the way, did they tell you, this is what I was, did they tell you about the new uh, schedule for this week? Yes. Okay, now the classes are going to be from. Yeah, teacher, uh, new roles. Monday to Friday. Okay, but we're not, we're going to finish two days before. So we were supposed to end a, Thursday 14th, okay, but now it's going to be a Tuesday, Tuesday 12th, okay, so then that's going to be the new one. Okay, I'm just going to go quickly through the list. So we have uh, Francisco Antonio is here, right? Yes, it's Francisco. yes. Uh, Giovanni is here, yes. Hector Ivan, yes. Present, sir. Ivan Ibrahim, yes. Present. Uh, Joel Emanuel. Joel, Joel. I haven't seen Joel. Uh, George Alberto. Present teacher. Joselino. Mr. Joselino was even driving early. Yes. Then Julio Cesar. Here, Mr. Yeah. Carla Selina. Yeah. Maybe I see Carla today. Carla Renee, yes. Catherine. Present. Yes. yes. Catherine is here. Yes. Luis Eduardo. 
Marlene y Elizabeth. Melissa Stephanie. Yes. Marlene present teacher. Yes. Melissa too. Present. Yes, yes I see Melissa, Michelle. Michelle, Michelle, Michelle. I don't see Michelle. Oscar. Oscar Alexander. Present teacher. Yes, and Oscar Obdulio, yes, is here. Present. Romeo too. Sara Elisa. Oh, Sara also Present. is here. Yes. Sofia. Present. Sophie, yes. And then Wendy. Xiomara. Present. Present. Yes. And Wendy, yes. And Jenny. Jenny, Jenny. Oh, yeah, Jenny is there. The microphone doesn't work any, but I know that you are there. Okay, good. All right, people. So that's all for today. We have time. I hope to see you tomorrow, right? Same time, 8 o'clock. If you can start before, no problem, right? I'll be here 7.15. So have okay. a good night. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, guys. Good night, everyone. Bye, 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 b